Hello and very welcome to Tap 49, where we're covering Punchestown Friday and Saturday. Um, geez, nearly a podcast every day, Deck, the way we're going. Yeah. We, we had a week off and now we can't stop. Uh, <laughs> uh, lots of fun. Uh, just about halfway through Punchestown now, not at time of recording, we're not, but by the time you probably listen to this, we will be. Mm-hmm. Uh, recording on Wednesday night, so um, unfortunately we don't have declarations for Saturday, but it is what it is. Um, Deck, as usual, how are you? You were at Punchestown again for day two. Um, how'd it go for you? Yeah, I, I'm good. Um, oh, look, it, it was just great to be there to see the golf up, see fans are slow in, and um, mm. it, was, it was great to see Sois and John parade beforehand, still full of beans. Oh, brilliant. And, uh, you know, they. they He's still the only one. Yeah, he's, he's still the only one. So, um, yeah, look, it, it was it was brilliant to see. It was brilliant to see fast or slow. Like things are feeling a little bit flat with Willie's winning races. Like we had it at Cheltenham, it was a big, big thing. You know, it was a lot of discussion about it. It is feeling a bit like that this week too. You know, it's very predictable, but. That was great. There was great atmosphere around the parade ring, um, great reception, and I think the horse deserves it because I think he, I think he's top class. Yeah, no, he absolutely does deserve it. He did it all on merit. Um, clearly loves Punchestown. I know Gallop and the Champ is one of Durkin around Punchestown, but you, you could probably make the argument that maybe he's not quite as good around Punchestown as he may be at uh, Leopardstown and Cheltenham. Maybe it's a time of the year thing. I don't know. Maybe that's a bit um, unfair. Like he's he's second today, you know. Yeah, but he did like he's a one eighty horse, you know. That's that's and maybe got maybe you know faster slow isn't that far off one eighty himself. But um, given where Hewitt finished in the race, I don't think they were they were running to that today. Now um, yeah, he is the king the king George winner. That that's a fair point. Yeah, it's a fair point. Um, and he was yeah. getting his ground. Does 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 Gallop and Deschamps wanted soft? That good, yeah. I don't know. Well, look, it's a, it, they're all valid questions. Um, we got a few videos in uh, from Twitter. Glenn sent one in. I think someone else might have sent one in too. Uh, I know you said it, Deck. He was looking quiet in the ring, Galapand de Champ, and yeah. obviously he's obliged by finishing second. Um, yeah, no, I just said take nothing away from Faster Slow. Fantastic performance. Um, I'd still have him as the second best staying chaser around. Uh, I, I think Galapand de Champ. The season he's had, in my opinion, it's still probably the best national uh, best. Campaign season, uh, staying chaser I've seen since Sizen John. It might like yeah, he's danced yeah, every yeah. dance, he's danced all the main dances, he's won three of them and been second in the others. Like it's an absolutely phenomenal season. Um, and it just goes to show you, no one cares if a horse gets beat, <laughs> it's really no. it's, it's just racing, it, uh, it takes absolutely nothing away from the horse. Um, I still think he's the one they all have to beat next year. I, I know the novices, especially lots of JP horses coming through that look very, very, um. Very, very interesting indeed. But they, in my opinion, they still have it all to do to get by faster, slow, and gallop on the champ. They still have um, set the th- trend for me. Um, um, I don't care what novice it is. I won't be back in any novice this season against Blans those Tower. two first time out. Splans Terror. No, I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't back Splans Terror against Galapan or faster, slow. I wouldn't back Fact of Foil. I wouldn't back uh, who else? I wouldn't back. I know the way you're thinking. Grange, Clare West. Um, wouldn't no. Wouldn't back any of them until I until I see otherwise. I, I'd have faster slow as, as the horse to beat next year. Now, yeah, less less miles on the clock. Is exactly, it? exactly. That's all. It's it's the season. It's the season Gallopin has had. Um, mm. A really really tough slog in the Gold Cup, having won one the year before. I think he's going to be feeling it. Like you know, yeah. Um, I, I think faster slow is he is the horse to beat now. Yeah, it's got it's setting up for. A phenomenal season next year and i'm just hoping they take each other on regularly and most importantly they all stay healthy um, and yeah. so we get those clashes and um, i imagine england to be the beneficiary of many of these clashes because a lot of them be going over for your bet fair chases your king george's yeah. even your cotswold chase could be looking all right uh, in yeah. january time like um yeah no absolutely fantastic um very much looking forward to it uh deck as i said you were at um at punches town today so what did you think of the you know the undercard um obviously Dancing City winning the three mile novice hurdle, um, completing a fantastic season for himself. Uh, harsh, uh, impressive in the handicap. A few other um, races there of note. Obviously the the DBF final as well. Um, answer the cave a gallant second to uh, back to normal. What did you uh, think? Any anything catch your eye on the card today? 
Uh, I thought Harsh was, was very, very impressive. Uh, the juvenile through that, I was um, taken by Harsh now. Um, mm-hmm. And I, I don't know what to make of the, the auction, auction order final. Um, is the Martin Pipe form what we thought it was? Do we, do we yeah. need to be worried heading into Saturday? Yeah, well, you could say that, but Answer the Cave probably hasn't lost a whole lot in defeat. Um, I know Back to Normal's reversed the form with him, but Back to Normal's had a um, less kind of demanding campaign, stable mm. debut for Gavin Cromwell, first time on that ground, so yeah. he could well have improved for the ground there as well. Um, back to Normal, though, he's going to be a horse that's very high on my wants to watch next year. Um, obviously, very unexposed and going and winning like that punches down. He's excited now next year. Um, but look, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't take much away from Answer the Cave there. I think he, he's ran close enough to form. I know what you're saying though, like uh Bright uh better, better, days, ahead. better days ahead. Better days ahead. Um yeah, he was fairly underwhelming now in the stairs race. Yeah. Um although he's Peter Corbin has, has followed up now in at yeah. air. At air. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, to be honest now, I, I could have probably followed up in there. Uh, all due respect. Oh yeah, you I could have you, you I could have jocked up in on your back. We well, probably yeah. would have collected prize money <laughs> in my MFS and I'm only messing with her. Um, yeah, that's mean. Uh, no, no, yeah. it, it, look, he was still second as the case, mm. like you know what I mean? It's not that but has he ran the form and it's just not good enough? It would have been mm. better if he was beating out the back of the telly. You right, know, yeah, like, no, no, I understand what you're saying. Yeah, no, I get what you're saying. Is, is that as good as the form is now? Although he is older, you know. The others are entitled to improve passing. Good say. point, yeah. A good point, yeah. So, no, they look at this. You can, I could, I could accept either side of the coin. Um, and there's no, it's not beyond the realms of possibility that Waterford Whispers has improved himself. He did do a lot wrong in the Martin Pipe, like he was keen the whole way around and he, he only yeah. found one, two good. So, um, ah, look, come here. I, I'm, I'm sure he'll, he, he's still going to be the best on Saturday, <laughs> you know. But, um, you look, it's just, just something. You know, um, a, a little bit of a, a downer on the farm that we had really hyped up. Um, elsewhere on the card, I suppose, like, it was absolutely fantastic to see a seven year old gelding winning another flat race for jump horses, wasn't it? Oh, bring a tear to your eye, it would, yeah. You know, having been unlucky in the race two years ago, <laughs> it, it, it was great to see him win it, mm-hmm. and uh, I can't wait to see him come back and, and try to defend his his title next year <laughs> that's up there with some of the the great returns like i remember fleming star coming back to win a grade one obviously sprinter sakura and now we can add yeah. redemption day to that that list it's absolutely fantastic yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just, been, just being beat by his dead mate two years ago was absolutely oh. What I've tried the week, yeah. It has. <laughs> um, anyway, yeah. Uh, one horse before we move on deck, I will. Uh, j- I just want to uh, note listeners too because it's a horse we tipped up a few weeks ago, and he ran in that um, the Louis Fitzgerald Hotel Hurdle won by Gorgeous Tom, who beat Mister Giff. But uh, the fifth place horse, Freeman's Bay. Uh, I thought he ran an absolute blinder. He was a little bit snatched up on the home turn. I think it was more. I don't think he was unlucky. I just. Don't think he could go to pace. He was just slightly outpaced. Uh, came home really well. Nearly got fourth on the line. Um, as I said, that's a staying chaser that's going to win nice races next year. Um, and I'd I'd nail my colours to that mass. And I I, I know he, I think you may have tipped him deck when, when you actually did put him up, but um, he'd be definitely one now that I'd be taking into next year. And I'd be very confident now that he'd be. You know, I, I wouldn't actually want to see him win a beginner's chase. I'd want to see him run two or three nice races, and then you know. <laughs> Um, rock up in, in a nice staying handicap chase. Um, I don't know, like obviously, the Irish National is the one that you think of coming to mind straight away. It's always the race if you're thinking about a handicap in this country. But, um, I think he's won Freeman's bet that you really need to keep a close eye on for next year. I tell you, Ron, I love your race. Uh, anything else, Deck, on the uh Wednesday card before we move on? No, it's obviously, so- let's go, champ. Actually, sorry, you're you're, you're oh, my sorry. center, yeah. So, we Jesus, yeah. We, yeah, go on, yeah. What do you think of him? All right, time's time's. Very, very good. I thought it was um it was, it was over down the back straight. I, I actually think um you, you should get better odds if you go collect the tree out. Anyway. <laughs> and then you're yeah. Do you know when you're that confident? <laughs> you know when you're that confident, you should get better odds if you who, who would you do, who'd you do your daddy long legs bet with? AK. 
AK, and then here'd you do Let's Go Champ. Like you should one day you should just do it. I'll, I'll try and video it. Oh, you did it with both of them. I'll, one day I'll just yeah. video you that like when they're down the back straight trying to hand your ticket in. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> just like the extra point there. Yeah. You know, it's not, not that rule. You can you can collect it. If you collect the three out, you get an extra point. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> it'd be it'd be good content. All right, uh, well let's let's start then, Deck. Uh, the first race to three forty, the Stanley Asphalt Hunters Chase for the Bishop's Court Cup. Um, would you rather be an owner that wins the Bishop's Court Cup or the Lady Ladies Perpetual Cup or or the Latouche Cup? Like, there's some fantastic cups on on show punches down this um, over the festival. Um, the Bishop's Court now, uh, is the, I'd say that's huge, is it? I have a feeling that it like, just it has a big massive. sound off it, doesn't it? So you oh, wouldn't yeah. be able to get that home now if you were... No, like, that wouldn't fit in the boot of the car. Yeah, you'd need to win the Defender, the Land Rover bumper to probably get yeah, this one yeah, and yeah. take the car home as well as the trophy. Um, I don't know if you get to take it home. I'd imagine it says there. I'd say, like, you, you probably wouldn't want to take it home, would you? You'd probably throw your back out trying where, to get it. <laughs> you, might, you might want to win it. <laughs> I'm actually going to say this thing could actually just be small yeah, and nice now. I'm going to have to. It does sound like it does sound bleeding massive though. So I'm going to just uh, images. Hold on. Um, ah, it's not that big. Actually, kind of disappointing. Now it looks like there's yeah. a fair bit of weight to it. But um, yeah, no, okay. I'd say there's bigger cups out there. I think the ladies' perpetual one was quite big as well. And look, we'll we'll have people in the comments. So we always have people in the comments where we have uh, throwaway segments like this. Uh, tell, yeah. Usually giving us education, which we love. <laughs> we, we do read the comments so. Uh, thank you very much for them. Anyway, Deck, uh, enough of the messing around the uh, the Bishop's Court Cup. Uh, was this a race you spent much time on? Who, who do you have here? Oh, look, the, the Nordner turns up here again. Um, it was quite disappointing on Tuesday over the banks, but back over steeplechase fences here, I think he's going to be difficult to beat, but I, I'm going to have a go at Chateau Alain. It's his first run for Ross O'Sullivan. He's a seven-year-old, and he, he he's a horse who looks to be improving, and I think could spring a bit of a, a surprise here. So look, well, I think the Northern will be difficult to beat. I, I'm going to take a chance at Chateau Alain. Chateau Alain for Deck. Um, I'll probably be sitting on the fence on this one. I can see um, we haven't had any any horses leased out from uh, what what's uh, who was it? Well, no, Harry. Uh, uh, no Feely and David No Brown. Feely. No Feely didn't fancy a pop at the Bishop's Court Cup this year no. um, after after the ladies' perpetual disappointment. So um yeah, right, the, the Northern is probably the one to beat Deck, but yeah, no, um seven year old shot shot for, for Deck. Ian Cribben taking right, taking off seven there as well. Uh, hopefully he gets you off to a flyer. I'm gonna happily sit this one out. Um, as my point-to-point -point form at that level is, is probably not what it uh, should be for someone that's on a podcast. Uh, the EMS Copiers Novice Handicap Chase deck is next. Uh, one of my favourite races of the week, I was talking about this off-air, yeah. and it's a race I've mentioned very regularly um, throughout the season. I was really hoping to see um, the company sergeant here uh, for Dennis Hogan. Obviously, he hasn't came here. It was such an obvious target that I can only assume maybe the horse has had a setback. Um Obviously, the Spalans Tower form has been well advertised. Him winning the punt, uh, the novices chase uh, on the Tuesday. Tactical move comes here, ten year old, but does come here off one four five. You'd have to think he's well handicapped, deck, wouldn't you? Um, I know Percival Lagawa in here too, um, and obviously a horse I liked as well. Uh, Spirit of Legend. It's a proper race. I love this race. It's so competitive. Yeah. Uh, really looking forward to it. Who do you fancy? Oh, I think the winners between Tactical Move and, and Percival Lagawa. I, I know you said ta tactical move is only a ten year old. We still don't have his chaser. Yeah, um, he, he was second yeah, in true. the Powerball Cup to Plans Tower, and he's you know gone and won the the three mile novice. Uh, he won two chases before that. He you know Willie's been farming this race. Mm. You know he, he I think he's going to be tough. I know Mister Policeman is in here, but I just think this horse has has more about him, and the form is is so strong. Like the, this Plans Tower form is. Is very very strong. Press for Legua, he, he's up two pounds for his last fence fall at Leopardstown. He was last in the the, the Dryn Mar before that. Obviously getting ready for that race, he won a beginner's chase at Galway. Yeah, look, it, it's between the two of them for me. I'm, I'm struggling to split them, but on recent history, I you know if I had to pick one, I'd be siding with Tactical Move. But I, I think, will. Yeah. Okay. Well, well, as I said, Willie farms this race, so yeah. I, 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 but I think the winner does come from come from the table. Right, okay. 
Uh, that's interesting. I was, I would name, I thought for sure you were going to go Percival Lagawa. Um, but no, that that's fair enough. I think tactical move, like you have to take note one, off 145. Um, people were scorning that Powers Gold Cup a little bit, I think. And it, it did, at the time, it admittedly did look <laughs> weak enough. Ah, people were saying it was a weak novice chasing. No, um, basically, it because it was. Yeah, but no, said us, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, yeah. Well, I thought it was the, the hottest novice chase of the season, anyway. I, I, I'm um, yeah, but but look, it looks a lot better now. Like, if, if, like, obviously, we haven't recorded, we could be listening to people, could be listening to this, and our nap at the top, Blood Destiny, in the, in the previous top has gone and won. So he's gone and won a handicap. Splans Terror's gone and won the grade one. This thing could end up seven to four, yeah. <laughs> if that's the case. Um, I think the most. The most exciting winner, and I, I can't believe I'm going to say this because the horse have just gotten constant abuse to all season. Uh, but I think the most exciting winner would be the six year old Mr. Policeman off 11 12. Um, it's he's definitely been more like it, uh, since kind of they dropped him in class and uh, they, mm. they hiked him up very quickly. But um, he was good against Arctic Brazil and beating the company sergeant 100 to 30 on. Um, it looked like it looked workmanlike at the time, but. You know, subsequently the company sergeant is clearly no mug given how well he ran a fairy house. One forty nine is on the high side, but if a six year old can defy that mark, uh, yeah, but 11, he is 12, an alpha winner, Andy. So you know, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. People yeah. trying to, yeah, that was people trying to collect. That was like you with your with your let's go champ bets. Except that was people in in November <laughs> trying to in collect and yeah. handed in their tickets. Uh, um, look, I, I think off one forty nine, he'd want to be like he'd want to be grade one class, but as you said, he only six light lightly raced. Um, promises to be improved up and trip look i'm not going to tip him but i would like to see him run well because he'd be a very exciting horse for next year uh tactical move is mine as well though deck i completely agree like it's hard to ignore that Spalans tower form um it's in the book now and i, I think blood destiny should run well i know as i said we're recording before blood destiny runs funny enough deck what we, there is actually one uh betting company going what pricing tactical move is um you have to have a guess could he be five to one? Eight to one. Eight to one. Okay. Eight to one. Mr. Policeman, five to two favourite. Percival Lago at nine to two. Tactical I thought Mr. Policeman would be, be quite short, yeah. Um, I, I didn't think he'd be eight. So That's very move. short. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, no, tactical move at eight to one. I, it's hard to not back him at that price. Oh, um, yeah. few who, others that it won. Sorry, sorry, Dick. Who, who has a price up? Three, six, five at the minute. I've been priced up eight to one, um, and then as of the rest of them that I want to just to point out, uh, Spirit of Legend down the bottom there, twenty to one was going well at Nice before falling. Um, I could see him running a, a mighty race there, but no, I, I think he'd, they'd be playing for place money behind Tactical Move. Like he's probably a well handicapped horse off one forty five, um, and that could be a potential nap of the top for the Thursday, or sorry for the Friday, but we will see. We'll move on then, deck to the Hanlon Concrete. Uh, Glenn Carrick, Lady Fr Lady Francis Flood, Mayor's Chase. Down. It took me a minute to get that one out. Uh, seven runners, um, Allegory de Vassi and Brides Hill um, up towards the top there. On stay as well. Um, probably hard to see anything else kind of getting involved mm -hmm. out of those three decks. So who would you fancy here? Um, look, Allegory de Vassi, she's, she's best at the weights here because she's rated four pound above Brides Hill. Um, mm. And she's she's only given her two, but she just has a tendency to draw one in, doesn't she? She can yeah, she can run below par and like Bright Sale is coming here on a four timer. I am, I guess she's only getting the two pound, but unbeaten this season, yeah, un, unbeaten this season. It just consistency wise, I think it'd be the safer play than Allegard mm. Vesey. On Steve has been kind of disappointed me all season when I've been building her up, so she probably goes and bolts up now. But <laughs> now I, I'll I, it, I'd take Bride's Hill and kind of just hoping for Allegard of Essie to have an off day, which yeah, she, she can do. Yeah, there's there's two factors in this for me, Deck. A, I think Allegory de Vassi with A just maybe gotten faster and I think she's more comfortable at two miles. And B, Bride's Hill on better ground is a better mare. Um, I know she's won on soft this year, um, but if, uh, looking back on her previous form, I think good ground, you see a better mare. Uh, so with those two kind of coupled together, I'd be very comfortable taking Brides Hill. Um, is Keith Dunne who injured? 
or Keith, is he just can't do eleven one? Keith um, broke his thumb pretty bad. Ah. Apparently, he was in a sling today, but oh, um, I've heard he's had to get wires in it and everything. So, oh Christ! Ah, I hope he's all right. He's recovered, to Keith. Oh, you know, really? Yeah, <laughs> but apparently, yeah. it's pretty bad. <laughs> ah, no, that that's desperate. Uh, he had a phenomenal season. Hopefully, speedy yeah. recovery. He's back soon. But Sean Flanagan, no worries there. Um, look, I think he's got a chance of having a nice Punches Town Festival winner there with Brides Hill. Uh, on to the champion hunters then deck of five twenty five. Um, I do you say this trophy's massive as well. <laughs> they usually are like oh, this one does the, yeah, phenomenal. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, yeah, this thing's probably bigger than the horse that wins it. Oh, uh, you put up a, a, tweet, a tweet later on a picture of them all. Uh, yeah, if you want me so to, I will. Yeah, I'll, I'll <laughs> yeah, definitely, yeah, definitely. have a vote. Uh, your 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 uh, trophy yeah, hierarchy. Pick your favorite. Yeah. <laughs> pick your favorite what would you rather win um yeah it's just kind of the the usual boys showing up here um you know D david christie with a with um vossele down there and it could say royal rendezvous back actually um, yeah. i see they're very interesting i didn't actually know that uh what mrs Car mrs caroline uh, mccalden trains now uh, good to see lifetime ambition as well. One of your favourites, deck when our cork yeah. the last day. Uh, it's on the line going for a uh, well, two time. He's obviously beat a channel, and uh, Fern's lock too for for David Christie. What do you think here? Um, I wouldn't be giving it to bit. I say Bill away is probably past it now, isn't he? So who, who would you fancy? Yeah. Oh look, well, well, it's on the line can look very very slow at times. He's he's proven he's arguably the best in the division now. He's um, he won at Navin, was it Navin? And then he was he was touched off at Cheltenham, but he, he looked outpaced the whole way at Cheltenham. But he, he's won over the shorter trip or entry then. Mm. But Lifetime Ambition, he, he I don't think he's taken him on yet. Um, Lifetime Ambition is far from six in either point to points or hunter chases. Um, he was touched off by Dinny Lacey and he unseated the other time he was beaten. So. Like I think he was only beating a short head by by Dinny Lacey, and then he's mm. on the other time he has him on. I, I once thought he could be a Gold Cup horse. He's a brilliant jumper. Yeah, yeah. I he's a joy to watch over the fence, and I I think he takes this. I I I, I think he still retains an awful lot of his ability. Right. I, okay. I think he could be still running in handicap chases at the festival. Right, okay. And do you think he the three miles that's okay with you, is it? Yeah, it's I, three miles and a hunter chase. Yeah, I suppose. That's yeah, it's point. twelve stone what yeah, I suppose, yeah. You know, like the, in the Tri Town okay didn't quite get home. But yeah, like three miles well handicapped horse, I suppose. Yeah, well. exactly, exactly. Like, you know, I, I'd be expecting him to be getting three miles and a hunter chase. Yeah, I'm gonna take a chance on Boss Robin. Um, who hammered Fern's lock? Is, is, that not the, uh, is that not the horse who won the race when, when you got a, a, one, <laughs> like a one to a twelve? One to shot yeah, the, the very same. Yeah, they couldn't give away Fern's lock that day, he ended up two to seven. <laughs> and so he was only kind of a certainty that day. Uh, yeah, Boss Robin, he looks like a big, big improver this season. Um, he might be priced based on the fact that what he did at Fairy House was a fluke, and you know, maybe it was, but he's won his last three. And he's only eight, so he's entitled to be still improving. Um, so yeah, why not? I think why not have a go? Uh, all of these have had pretty tough campaigns so far. Um, and this lad is coming here off the back of winning a fairy house. Um, yeah, so why not? Um, Lonesome Boatman, also quite interesting. Former Martin Brassel horse, and uh, now with Daniel G. Murphy, uh, has won his last three in points and has looked to have kind of restored. Um, where I'm looking for zest to the game because he was struggling, but yeah, great to see him, uh, you know, back to form. Of course, I followed in his younger days, uh, expensive to follow, but um, hopefully, he gives uh, Mr. D. Allen a good spin around. Uh, and then, do you think um, Sam Colby tipped up? Um, it would just be a lot of angry people, probably people just looking at him angrily going around the ring, which is not his fault. <laughs> Um, it, like, uh, yeah, I don't know, like, what a great horse, though. Like, I know he's 12 now, but um. Still enjoying life though. Plenty of point wins. Obviously, didn't go very well at Cheltenham, but is what it is. Hopefully, he runs a runs a blinder there for uh, for Mr. Hamilton. Uh, right, let's go. Move on then, deck to the six o'clock. Uh, the champion hurdle. We'll probably keep this one very quick. Uh, just talk about how great State Man is. 
Um, a bit disappointing that there's only four runners. Mm. Um, but look, what can you do? Fair play to Lorna Fowler and, and Gordon Elliott yeah. for, for keeping Willie honest, I suppose. But um, yeah, there's the, the way racing's gone, isn't it? The point to point stuff, the, the two mile divisions, both over uh, hurdles and fences, are just suffering at the minute. But yeah. can't take nothing away from the state. Um, no, look, Segan's absolutely, he, he's an absolute joy to watch, the ultimate professional. Um, even when he was poor at Cheltenham, he, he still got the job done. And I thought Paul really looked after him at Cheltenham. And that's probably going to be the winning of this race for him, is the fact that he didn't have too hard a race. I don't think he jumped particularly well at Cheltenham. I think, just thinking back now, he was, wasn't great at the one going past the stands. Uh, before they turn out into the country and three out, I think he missed, but he still got the job done. Beating, um, what is if is Irish point five or six? Is he five? Irish point is six. Six, um, yeah, look, look, Irish, Irish point is going to improve and he, he deserves another go at him, but I like, I can't genuinely make a case for getting statement beaten. And I'm not just gonna go. Well, I'm putting up Irish Point because you can back him, like you know. I I can't yeah. make a case for getting statement beaten. If he does get beaten, and people manage to back Irish Point, fair play to his but like I think it's just total chance yeah. in your arm. You're dealing like, for the laugh, aren't you? You're not yeah, just, like, you're just doing it because you want to have a bet in the race. And you're not, you know, I can't make a case for getting statement beaten here. If he turns right. up, you know. The horse we know he, he wins this the same way yeah. he's been racking up the grade ones exactly yeah um right quick question then for you as we move on to the next race um which is another willie mullins favorite in bally burn it's the uh alana holmes champion novices hurdle over two and a half miles um both horses are one to four deck state man and bally burn who would you rather back if you have to have the lot on one of them state man yeah, probably a big statement. Yeah, so, he's, he's not novice, isn't he? yeah. yeah, you know, yeah, exactly. so yeah, mm. it's, I, although I can't make a case for getting Ireland beat. Yeah, this is another spot kick. Um, anything you want to add with the rest of the runners? Uh, Jimmy Desai, Mirrors or West Predators goal, Staffordshire not, and Jitara ridden by Nico de Boinville, no less. Who do you, um, mm. so any uh, you know, anything you want to add about the other runners other than Bally Burns Gray? <laughs> Mirazora West is, is better going this way. He's, he's quite good at Fairy House. He has there um, reproduced the farm away from Fairy House. Chitara disappointed at Fairy House. Staffordshire not ran a, a big, big race behind. Um, right, he, he had been poor before that. None of them have shown enough form to beat Ballyborn, but something has to be a miss for Ballyborn to lose, I think. Yeah, yeah, no, I'd agree. Um, unless, like, it's, I don't think you can't even say this is the quickest ground he's ever encountered because he went and beat Dancing City six lengths in the bumper last year. So, mm. uh, you know, and, and obviously the, the ground was quick in his point to point and his uh, when he beat Quantum Storm as well um, on his rules debut. So the ground's going to be no issue. Um, trip is no issue. Uh, he was devastating in a bearing bing. I mean, in my opinion, though, the weakest bearing bing you're, you're probably ever going to see. Uh, Willie obviously with the first five home, um, but that takes nothing away. This race ain't much stronger. So um, yeah, Mirrors or West one thirty eight. Like you could have ran him in a handicap if you wanted to. Yeah. Um, Jimmy Desai has him covered. Predators Gold. Um, all due respect, probably the worst handicap one forty worst handicap horse in the country at one forty seven. Um, Staffordshire not look ran a lovely race at Aintree. Um, but I God, I can't wait to see him over a fence. Yeah, um, yeah. He just disrespects his hurdles. He's going to make an absolutely phenomenal chaser. Um, I thought he just hated the track at Turles. Big, he's a big horse. Um, put it right at Aintree and just bumped into another potential high class mare uh, in brighter days ahead. And then Jatara um, wouldn't even be surprised to see her finish second. To be honest, Dick. Um, you know, depending, like she's had a busy enough campaign, but yeah, she was disappointed she's a, now uh, at Fairy House. Do you think beaten by Jade Grugy? Third. Ooh, was she tall? Depends what way. Yeah, she was third. She's beaten five lengths and kind of staying on. I just don't oh, know. She must have on, yeah. Um, yeah, but still. Yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll... yeah I, I, I was disappointed with her. 
I don't was feel it? the same about Greg Jade Grooms as you do. So I Yeah, yeah, it. fair enough. Um I'd like to see her at three miles next year. I think um Tomorrow. getting yeah, getting the seven pounds now, like obviously you go far back enough, isn't there? A former Punches Town Stairs winner Jetson is in the pedigree, isn't he? So um Yeah, I, I uh, we'll be seeing her next year, I'd say she'll be up the pole. <laughs> and it can't be by walking the park because she's by walking the park, so <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to say it probably be play Brazil. I wouldn't put it past him. <laughs> It doesn't matter. Get her. No. Doesn't matter. Jesus. Oh, oh God. All right. Jesus. Right. Okay. Uh, yeah, boy, that one. All right. X rated stuff. Uh, 705 is the unique, uniquely novice hurdle. I don't know what makes it so unique, but um, anyway, it's just another novice hurdle on the card. Um, right. So this is the return of Attaboy Charlie, who was so bitterly disappointing at Ferry House and has stayed away from the, the handicap. I don't think he'd have actually got into the two mile handicap, would he? Off 123. Um, it's going to take a lot to make me not back him here, but we do have Eagle Fang, and I'd imagine Lark in the morning is probably going to be a warm order um, to, to go close here, Deck. But who would you who would you fancy here? Um, yeah, just did this race, the conditions have changed. Um, right, okay, go on. Because I oh, just just bear with me one second. I'm gonna look up. Yeah, yeah. You had El Fabiolo winning this. Um, <laughs> of course he did. Yeah. He, he, uh, so you're not allowed running it if you've placed in the grade one or a grade two. So so the, right. conditions, the conditions have changed. So this is the yeah. race where um, my, this is actually you know who won this last year. It was Mom, but this is um, it was Mombeg Park beats Spillane's Tower in this last year. No, oh, right. yeah. Um, look, it's 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 quite competitive. Um, like Alaboy Charlie, he does have a sights lowered here. Was yeah. he just not good enough at, at Fairy House? Um, I'd say so. It was a great two, wasn't it? Um, mm. I would I would imagine he is a flatbread. And it was very testing ground. I'd say that was also yeah. that also played a factor. I would say he'll absolutely love this ground. Um yeah. I wouldn't rule him out. I wouldn't rule him out with any degree of uh, uncertainty now. Like another way and Lark in the morning are gonna be all the rage. Um I'd say those two are gonna have a right tussle at the top of the market, but I, I I'm not gonna hold a horse accountable for just one bad run. I, I did say he, you know, he's gonna be a mid one thirty yeah. horse and I'd still stand by that even after one bad run. Um but anyway, what do you think about the race? Yeah, look, he, 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 I think he's he definitely, I think there's lots of remember the chance here. He, he's a chance. Uh, Tim Severe also disappointed at Fairy House. Um, he he had beaten Rainbow Trail at Nice before that. He, he should have him covered. Uh, Eagle Fang, second to hands on early in the season. Mm. And, you know, we, we'll, we'll see how hands on runs tomorrow. He, he Eagle Fang won well at Nice. Another way, um, wasn't beat when falling at Fairy Hills, was staying on, beat Katina Zapata. Um, the horse will also run tomorrow, so we, we'll know a little bit more by the time we get to Friday. Dark in the morning, the Fred Winter winner of 122. Look, he's probably in the Cubby Anything category at the moment, but I don't, although I, 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 I probably kind of back hands on tomorrow, I, I still. Struggled to put juveniles up. I wouldn't have looked that harsh today and harsh bolted up. I, but it's, I just don't really like to get involved with juveniles when they go into open company. After saying that you you, you loved them all year and now you don't want to be getting involved with them. Well, like running against <laughs> each other is fine, but you know, it's it's a big step up. Like, you know, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's very difficult for them. I know they're getting a lot of weight um, now, but it's, it's still difficult. But like Harsh kind of just laughed at me today. Fenway Park is probably the one I like. Um, he was lame the last day when he pulled up. You just put a line through that. He was second to Queen of Bourbon before that. And yeah, I, I think he could give this a right go on him. Yeah, and he's well well treated at the weights, or well favoured at the weights. Obviously, only carrying 11 5 because he hasn't won a race before. Um, so that's obviously going to um, really help him get seven pounds off the likes of another way out of by Charlie. Um, even getting weight off four-year-olds, which you don't usually see every day of the week, albeit only a pound. Um, yeah, still very significant. It's crazy to see ascending in here as well. Like he's a one thirty-one rated mm. hurdler. 
Um, I've just been convinced he's again another flatbread. Um, I look, I I wouldn't I wouldn't hold him too much in. Uh, wouldn't blame him too much for his last run at Navin when the ground was extremely test and beating at odds on, but. I just think he needs better ground. Um, obviously, the maiden hurdle form at Christmas time. I'm probably going to have to nearly start admitting defeat on that. No flies in him. Bitterly disappointing again uh, on Wednesday. Um, obviously, we've lost DB Cooper. Um, as the, the Gilligan horse, though, that was fourth, I suppose, is you know, doing something for the form. He's a, he looks like a very nice horse we were talking about. As a possible Kings Galway Hill. hurdle. Kings Hill is a possible Galway yeah. hurdle horse uh, later on in the uh, summer. So, I'll stick, though, with my Adebay Charlie flag, um, I'm gonna get happy to give him one more go. Ground, as I said, probably two testing at Fairy House, and look, you have to be a minimum 130 horse to win the way he did at Leopardstown. I know it was a much weaker race, but like circling them all borderline on the chase course, coming a dozen wide into the home turn, and, and still last now having to quicken again uh, to go and win. Um, yeah, I think he's a horse that, that could give this a good go on, on really nice ground, uh, which will play to his strengths as being by make-believe. Um, final race deck, probably one that we can only gloss over, the Howden Insurance Brokers flat race. Um, did you see anything you liked here? Yeah, um, I, I kind of like Quint Major here, second to Firefox and then toward behind Manji Bello and Spartan Glory. Spartan Glory, um, he, he won the next day at, at Fairy House. Yeah, and I, I thought he ran quite well for a long way. Fairy House on his hurling, hurling debut in the grade two. Mm. Firefox has obviously, you know, been knocking on the door in grade ones all season. So, yeah, Qu Quint Major was the one I was drawn to. Quint Major, okay, very good. Um, I'll be happily bookending this card by sitting on the fence, no problem at all. Uh, look, we're not going to go thoroughly in depth into Saturday, obviously, because we don't have declarations. So, what I'll do, deck. Um, is there any races I don't know if you have them there in front of you that you would like to talk about we'll go in race card order uh, just to, to keep it simple um, starting obviously with the cross country I doubt there's anything in there you want to chat about is there well look do you know what I mean we, we kind of covered we, we covered, we the covered them all haven't we <laughs> in some yeah, ways we, it's nearly, it's nearly re a repeat of tomorrow's race isn't it yeah like looking at it they, they probably won't all run it, but you know Ooh, it, it's there's a lot of days running in the Latouche. Um, you move on then to the stairs. The, the, the stairs. I I haven't narrowed it down yet. Um, I I just didn't spend enough time on it because we didn't have declarations. You move on to the the mayor's grade one. Lassie Mount should be winning that. Um, Lanchy ladies in there. Like I I do really like Henry Street. I, I spoke about them before Cheltenham. Hey, tell me something, girl. Lantry Lady and Hispanic Moon. Lantry Lady's going to win tomorrow, so I doubt she's turning up again on, on Saturday. Uh, the, there's another handicap chase then. Again, I haven't looked at it. Yeah, well, it is the not the 150 yet. Yeah, three mile handicap, yeah. I just, I, I'm going to wait. I, I'm not going to get stuck into advising people that have bets on horses that might not run. Look, th there's two horses on the card for me. I'll be doing the double. I spoke about Butler Secret when we opened the show for Tuesday's card. And I think he could be a champion hurdle horse. When he went down to, I, I, I'll say again, when he went down to his first hurdle at Nice, he looked like he'd never seen one before. By the time he crossed the line, he looked like an absolute professional. And he was brilliant at Fairy House the last day. I think he wins this. And I genuinely think this horse could be a, a champion hurdle horse. And then the, the second half of the double, well, he's got to mention early on in the card, uh, in, in the show already. It's obviously Waterford Whispers. I let you talk about many. Good old Waterford Whispers, yeah. Um, look, what what have we said that we don't need to say anymore? Everyone, like anyone that even half listened to the show knows who this horse is. Uh, attempted to make him famous from top one onwards, really, when we covered Galway, and he won that maiden hurdle. Um, yeah, just looked an attractively handicapped horse. Um, Mikey O'Connor rolled him in the Martin Pipe and um, was probably at the front on Sufferance. Uh, they didn't go that quick. He was I, keen. Like he, he was he, keen, but he, like that was the place to be, wasn't it? Because they didn't go that quick. And he only found better days ahead too good in the last 100 yards or so. Um, when 
like you obviously ran out of rail and it's not an easy place to be on the new course after you jumped the last and you, you've yeah. been in front so long um you wouldn't begrudge any horse uh kind of just kind of get almost getting lost it's like you, you do you almost get lost on that yeah. running um especially on the on the new course so i think he's every chance to make amends uh that's not to say that the race is going to be fiercely not competitive like it's going to be extremely competitive yeah. you could argue it's going to be the most ha competitive handicap hurdle of the week like it's looking really 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 um, like there are 43 horses in it yeah you've got olympic man who's going to be quite a warm order i'd say as well um like you'd you'd be worried about the like like if you go further down um there was a few that was kind of obviously parker king's yeah, running West, in, there, walk is in there um, western walk yeah exactly and um, one that we we've been big on Encanto Bruno back on better ground uh you couldn't rule him out with any degree of certainty as well but look I, I, we've made no secret that what we think of this horse um yeah. one that could go to the top next season and all his chases 100 wow. um really very very much so even maybe over two miles um because he's not slow so yeah. yeah uh is he the nap at the top oh, or is he he has to be, doesn't he? He has to be. He has to be. Sure, look, we, we, we'll just do this again, yeah? <laughs> run it back. <laughs> run it back. Know, running in the last jump race of the festival. Where oh, not I again. Not oh, again. <laughs> oh, my God. I forgot about that. <laughs> we should never have Yeah. Having your nap. Yeah, you know, we're, we're having our nap in the last jump race of the festival again. Oh, Christ. I forgot about that. He's got from <laughs> second, isn't he? He's going to get run down the last 100 yards. Again, yeah. yeah. I love the downhill down. finish, too. Yeah, no, we have the bumper to get out on anyway. Uh, so <laughs> hopefully, I mean, um, the charity race if we have to. <laughs> to the charity race, it will have. Yeah, <laughs> charity race. Forgot about that. Fifty nine quid to the winner. Um, yeah, no, that's um, yeah, it is the nap of the tap, hundred uh, percent. Two horses, I will just make a note of. Obviously, Butler Secret, the tech said, um, would have a phenomenal chance. Uh, I completely agree, and I'm going to do the double as well. Um, just before that though i'll go back to the stairs race because i think there might be a bit of a plot job in this uh, a horse i've mentioned a couple of times on twitter um, and i've mentioned that on the show a few times but i'm, I'm really interested in uh, digby who is in here what's he off um 128 sure he's off 128 is, is he actually he, sorry he's in the he's in the tray miler isn't he? he's not in the stairs yeah. sorry he's in the tray miler um nothing quite for the stairs race just yet um it is digby i think that this horse has been campaigned with one race in mind, and I have a feeling it's this one. Um, had a very, very quiet run Hodge in the. Said that uh, about the Ulster National. Sorry, Hodge said that about the Ulster National. Yeah, and then he didn't get the entry. So <laughs> <laughs> after it being, uh, you know, rescheduled a good few times, he's in here currently off ten stone four. I would fully expect him to be declared. Um, I think it's kind of weak for the grade, to be brutally honest with you. Um, obviously, you see the likes of Tactical Move, um, who's not going to run. Glenn Gooley, who enjoyed himself for a long way in the Grand National, is in there, but you couldn't back a horse who would unseat in the Grand National only three weeks later. Um, on the ropes, I'd say we'll go to the four-mile race if if Air hasn't left a mark on him. Uh, they're horses I would be kind of wary of. Uh, Cotta Horla, like we learned our lesson on him the last day at, at Fairy House. I don't think this is a strong race whatsoever. Um, and if he gets in here, which I think he obviously this is where they're going to go, he's in off 128. Um, quiet run behind Manella Kakuna in a novice chase in January. Um, you know, I think he's a, I think he's an outstanding chance. Uh, beating nine and a half lengths with like a classical dream and in behind flank and maneuver, whose form did peter off. But I think off 128, I think he's just a better horse than that. Um, and I think he's going to give that a right good go on Saturday. So I'd be quite confident on Digby. Hopefully he gets declared. Um, you're not going to lose your money anyway. There'd be no anti post betting on it. So uh, yeah. they'll just keep keep an eye on it. Um, I, I and, just wondered if um, I, this boy could run. He, he fell today. Um, but he was. I thought he was looking dangerous when he came down. I'd wonder right, if they'd, okay. they'd, they'd turn him out again. And Tom Lacey has cruise control in there. He's won his last two. I think last time yeah. off 136 and here off 140. I know you have the, the differences between the British and yeah. the Irish marks, but you know, a, a horse in form and a, a trainer in form haven't won the, the first handicap of the week. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I know we had Nap at the Tap Waterford Whispers, but just before we go off deck for Thursday, we would you make tactical move to Nap at the Tap in the in the handicap chase, or would you be is there anything else you might you might like? Yeah, probably tactical move. Like I, I was saying, I have between tactical move and personal leg of war, but 
uh, as I was talking earlier, I was getting more confident. You know, the more we mentioned Spillane's Tower, the more confident I was getting about that Camille. He could be my only bet of the day on, on Friday. On Friday. Yeah, no, yeah, that's, I'll that's just, fair. I'll be, I'll be down the sky bar. I won't even watch a race. Just <laughs> On the drink, just back, back tactical move. Um, I'm actually, and I know I shouldn't be mentioning English racing on this podcast, but I am looking forward to Newmarket. I'll probably post up a few uh, little selections on my own uh, Twitter account as well. Um, you know, tactical move is my best bet on the card as well. Nothing for the Bishop's Court. Um, don't think I've really anything else on the card either, to be honest. Add a boy Charlie, obviously, I'll be backing. Um, I think he'll be an each way price as well, which I'll be quite comfortable with too. So, add a boy Charlie, tactical move. That was tap 49 in just over 45 minutes. We do very much appreciate uh, all the listens and, and uh, coming up to us and whatnot and uh, comments, everything that you do it, it is very much appreciated. So, just keep doing the same and we'll keep doing the same. We'll keep going for as long as we can. Um, and then, yeah, we'll be back next week for when it all dies down. It's probably going to be towards the flat now, deck, is it? Well, I'd nice. say it'll be yeah, a lot more flat pods coming up. We'll, we'll try to get a few summer jumps in as well. Yeah, we'll find some winners, we promise. Don't worry. Yeah. Um, but until then, guys, top 50 the next yeah. one. I can't believe that. Uh, but thank you very much for listening to us throughout the whole Punchtown Festival. Hope you made a few quid, guys. And bye-bye. Cheers, look. Bye-bye.